have you ever been to a website and you see a floating call to action? You can see it right here on this website. There's this floating button. And as I scroll up and down the page, that button stays and it's a subscription button to subscribe. Or if you're on a local business website such as this one, it's kind of hard to see. It's right here on the right. It says request a service. And when you come and visit the page and you start scrolling around, it, there's this convenient way to get a service request in, which is obviously what this business wants is people to schedule appointments. Here's another example, and uh, this website could probably use a little bit of work, but uh, this is a podcaster, and we have two different floating items. One right here is an opt-in form to sign up for a newsletter, and you can see it scrolls up and down with an accordion. And then here's another one. Since he's a podcaster, a lot of podcasters want people on their websites to ask a question, and you can see that right there. Well, I was playing around with a new feature added to Cadence Pro theme, and this is what I came up with. So here I am on the site, and as I scroll down, you could see three different calls to action appear. I'm doing this for demonstration, and I'm going to show you how to do this, but I wanted to show you the variety of these floating call to actions and the different properties for them. So you can first see here on the bottom left, there's an accordion block. And when I click on the plus, up appears an opt-in form, a contact form to subscribe to the newsletter. And all your website visitor needs to do is put in their name and email address. And you can see I have that styled in. Another thing you can see it's off from uh, the far left of the website. I have it pushed in a little bit and you're gonna be able to place this pretty much where you want it. Uh, next, right here, I have a simple button. And this is going to be appropriate for most businesses. And this is a yoga studio. So it's a schedule a class. And when someone clicks on this button, it will take them where you want to take them on the website. And you can see I have this lifted up from the bottom and just a little off to the left from the side there. And you can see it. And just to make it fit above, you see right here, this is the most recent blog post. And it just shows the title of the blog post. But as soon as I post a new blog post, this will update to that title of that blog post. Now, I only positioned it up higher just so that I could fit them all on the screen. I could have actually positioned this anywhere I want on the website. And I'm also using the feature where it only appears when the visitor scrolls down a certain distance on the page. And you see that. So you're going to have control over that. So let me show you how to make one of these. So you're going to need to have the Cadence theme installed as well as Cadence Pro and enable hooked elements and you could see it will add a new menu item here on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that right now. So you can see the three hooked elements that I created already and just showed you. So let me show you how to create one of these elements. I'm going to go ahead and click on add new. And when we do that, we get this option to choose the type and we're going to choose fixed, right? Because it's fixed as the user scrolls. So I'm going to choose fixed and I'll go ahead and give this one a name. So I just named this floating button. Now here I'm going to add the button block. So I'm going to do a slash and start typing button and I'll use the advanced button block right there and I'll give the button some text. There it is. Press me. Now I want to adjust some of the properties of this. So I'm going to click right here where it says button settings. And right here, I'm pretty much going to change the color. So for the text color, I'm going to make this white. I'm going to use the global color palette and link it into the white there. And then on hover, it's also going to be white. So that's good. Next, I want to adjust the background color. So so I'll click here and I'll choose my primary color right there. And then for the hover, I will make it this. So there's just a slight change of the color there. And next I'm going to get rid of this border that you see right here. So where it says border width, I'm going to enter a zero and you can see that is now gone. So next I want 
to add some box shadow. So I'm going to go back here to the normal settings. It says box shadow. I'll turn this on and there it is. It's ever so subtle. I'm going to make it a little more pronounced. So I'm going to put a zero here, a zero here. And then for the blur, I'll put a 20 and you can see there it is pretty pronounced. So that is how I want it. Now I could make when this button is clicked or the visitor to go anywhere that I want on my website. So now that I've designed my button, I'm going to go ahead and start setting and configuring the floating action. So I'm going to click right here and for placement, let's look at our placement options. I'm going to choose the after scroll option. Now I could also have it just always appear as soon as someone lands on the web page. So since I already have those other ones on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and choose this one right here where it says fix to the top after scroll. So now once I choose that, here's when it will appear. It says the distance. So it's I, I just left it for the default, but you can adjust that all that you want. Now, here is where you enable the positioning right here where it says width. Change it from 100 percent to in this case, I'm going to choose auto. So what that's going to do is reveal some settings here where I can choose where I want this to appear. So since I already chose the top, I can choose the top left or the top right. I'll go ahead and choose the top right. Now, right here is the distance from the edge. So right now it's configured to just be right there on the edge. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and just click on publish so that you can see how that looks and then we'll adjust it. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. Now the button should appear like literally stuck right there. So let's see what happens. So oops, there's actually two things I forgot to set. I do this sometimes right here where it says unset your fixed elements not going to show if that says unset. So let me go ahead and choose that. So I'm going to choose to show this on my entire website, but you can choose where you want it to show. And then for the user setting, I'm going to choose all users just like that. Now I'll click on update and also remember you have device options right here if you don't want this to show on a mobile device. All right, now let's go ahead and do the refresh. OK, now as I scroll down, there it is. You see how it's kind of pressed right there on the top right. So let's have it come out and come down a little bit. That's easy enough. So here is the X distance from the edge and the Y distance. I'm going to go ahead and enter a 20 in each of them. So it brings it down and off to the left the same amount. All right. So now I'll do a refresh and there you can see it's been pushed down and it's been pushed off to the left. And when I scroll up, the button disappears and there it is. It appears. It's very easy to do. Now, the power of this is that you can use any block for this fixed element. So as you saw for me, I made an accordion. So let me show you that accordion right here. And it was this subscription form and I can put anything inside of the form itself. And as well, I also you saw the button and here is where you really see the power of this feature is I have this block right here. It's the post grid block inside of Cadence Blocks Pro. And I set it to just show the latest post and you can see it ended up looking really good right here positioned here. Now, let me show you why that is positioned so high. So if I go back here and here is the settings for the placement, when I scroll down, you could see the X distance is zero and that's why it is affixed to the far right edge of the web browser. You see right here, there's no space and right here you can see I have it up the Y distance from edge set to 100. So if I wanted to have this appear in a different location, I can increase the number and do an update and then refresh the page. And now it's right there. So you get that precise positioning on exactly how you want it. But you don't have to have it be appearing when you scroll either. I could have just as easily chosen a different placement option here, which probably would have been fixed 
to the bottom and it would always show, but that's how I wanted to place it. So if you want to generate more subscribers, like you see in this example, or you want to get more appointments and more service requests, like you see in this example, or if you wanted more subscribers or some additional increase in engagement, I encourage you to try this new feature in the Cadence Pro theme today. If you don't have Cadence Pro, we would love to have you as a customer. You could visit Cadence hyphen theme.com and you can see everything that's included in the pro version of the cadence theme. And this is just one of the powerful features that are included with the pro theme. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.